You don't have to be an artist or be creatively inclined in any way, shape or form to recognize the name Photoshop. Nowadays, we see that any picture manipulated or changed in any way is called by the layman as quote-unquote photoshopped, no matter the software used. Heck, this software has managed to make itself a verb. I'm not kidding. It's listed in the Merriam-Webster dictionary as a transitive verb and defined as follows. To alter a digital image with Photoshop software or other image editing software, especially in a way that distorts reality, as for deliberately deceptive purposes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> deceptive? Okay. <laughs> that was a bad joke. This is because this software is one of the oldest digital art software out there. It's a household name and to this very day remains unbeatable as the most popular and recognized software. In this video, we're going to take a deep dive into the history of Photoshop to learn about this legendary software a bit more. If you are a professional, a hobbyist or just someone who needs to edit photos regularly, you're in luck, because today we are going to talk about Photor. It's both a photo editing and graphic design app that allows you to create photo collages and even create digital graphics for social media or for printing. While there is a lot of choices out there when it comes to photo editing software, some are more expensive than others. Our sponsor for this video, Photor Platform, is free to use. Not only that, but you can start using it right now. You don't even need to download anything because it's a browser-based application. So all you need is an internet connection to start editing your photos for free. However, if you want to unlock its full potential, then you might want to upgrade to the premium plan, which will cost you $40 a year. That's like three bucks a month. Similar to leading photo editing software like Photoshop, you have all the basic control you'd expect from such an application. For example, you have basic adjustments, exposure, highlight, shadows, and so on. But you also have a huge library of automatic effects, like blemish fix, weight loss, reshape, eyeshadow, and wrinkle removal. And the list goes on and on. You can also remove backgrounds from your photos automatically, add elements and stickers, embed text, add frames, and even upscale your photos. Photor also provides a collage creation tool that has a lot of templates, and this is just you dragging and dropping images that you like into the collage, with a lot of customization and control. There is also the graphic design section, where you can create a YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook art. So, if you're looking for an easy, free, and robust photo editing software, the link will be in the description down below. Sometime in 1987, in a University of Michigan dark dorm room, or not, I'm not really sure, gotta ask Tommy himself, there was a PhD student with his old trusty Macintosh Plus who was writing a program he called display that very PhD student, Thomas Knoll, with a nudge of encouragement from his brother, John Knoll, ended up giving this world the most legendary digital art software. At this stage of the software's life, Thomas wanted to make a software that would be able to display, hence its name at the time, display, grayscale images on a monochrome monitor. Real cool name, Tommy. No one could have thought of that. At that time, while Thomas was a PhD student, John, his brother, if you've forgotten already, worked at a company called Industrial Light and Magic. This company was a division of the one and only film and TV company, Lucasfilm. The company created visual effects for movies and such, and John, being in the field of graphics, was interested in what his brother has concocted. He encouraged his brother to go through with this project and make it a full-fledged image manipulation software. Thomas was reluctant at first, arguing that making a commercial product would be a difficult thing to do. However, his brother convinced him he would somehow figure out a way to make money with it. Thomas took the advice of his brother and took a break from college to focus entirely on his software making process. Wow. <laughs> you know? The meme. 
Thomas really trusted his brother, huh? Anyways, the name chosen process of Photoshop was an arduous one, as it appears. In an excerpt from an article in PhotoshopNews.com, we find an interesting bit. Thomas changed the name of their software several times. Each time he found one he liked, it had already been taken. Image Pro and even Photo Hot were considered. And then, during a program demo, he confided to someone that he was having problems naming the program. The confidant suggested Photoshop, and that became the program's working name. We are now in 1989, and the duo had a solid name for their software that wasn't used before. Now they had to commence their sponsoring. The first way Photoshop was sold was an interesting one. The duo made a deal, a short-time one, with a company called Barney Scan. I hope I'm not butchering the name. They had agreed to have the software be included in a bundle of the company's slide scanner, which is a scanner made to scan 35mm slides and film negatives, and, of course, the software. This deal actually managed to garner Photoshop 200 sales, which is not that bad, is it? After the brothers' deal with Barney Scan came to an end, the brothers had to take their venture a step further. John headed to Silicon Valley and pitched Photoshop to Apple. Everyone was a fan of the software, so much so that they asked John to leave them some copies. Apparently, this was the first time Photoshop was pirated, as the people at Apple at the time shared the software with a lot of people and did not hold back. Adobe was next on John's hunting list. He pitched the software to the art director of the company, Russell Brown, and although Photoshop had major competition with another software named Color Studio, Photoshop successfully swept Russell off of his feet. That's why you hear the software called Adobe Photoshop. The brothers had successfully sold the license to distribute the software to Adobe in 1988. The reason why we say Adobe purchased the license to distribute the software is because Adobe didn't really own Photoshop. They could sell it, but for each copy sold, they had to pay the Knoll brothers, which was really smart of the Knoll brothers, especially after the software's further boom in popularity. Not long after, though, Adobe did buy the software for a whopping $34.5 million. This way, Adobe didn't pay any kind of royalty to the Knoll brothers anymore, but they sure got their pockets filled. Darn it, I wish my brother convinced me to take a break from college and make a software in 1987. I mean, I'm a programmer. I can do it. Right? No? Okay. Finally, in 1990, Photoshop 1.0 was released into the wild and cost about $895. Yeah, safe to say that Photoshop was never cheap, was it? At that stage, Photoshop was a Macintosh exclusive, but that would not last long as not many years passed before the software was made available in Microsoft's Windows. Windows being much more used and having a better reach overall, as it was all the rage, helped the software bloom in popularity. After this point, the rest is history. It's so interesting to see the software go into a sort of birth, and then peaking and solidifying itself in the digital arts world. Makes you wonder if there are any further steps for the software. So, where Photoshop is now? Today, Photoshop is a household name that still thrives. Its latest release was in February 2022, version 23.3. You have to admire a software that started with a 1.0 release and is now at its 23rd release. It's like seeing a baby grow into a full-grown adult with a car, house, and wife. The thing's got a verb to its name. No, seriously, this software is so old, it's got a whole family now. Adobe has worked on a whole suite, Adobe's Illustrator, InDesign, Premiere Pro, and many more that would all be in Adobe's creative suite and would include Photoshop, of course. It's safe to say that Photoshop is now the industry standard. We witness a lot of artists migrating from their open source, free or even affordable software to use Photoshop when they start becoming professional artists, photographers, or any kind of creative, really. However, on the fateful July 17th, 2013, Adobe announced a new plan. 
their creative suite, which was a one-time purchase of all the software Adobe had developed, would become a brand new business model by the name Creative Cloud, in which they would provide all of their Photoshop family software and more for a monthly expensive subscription, instead of permanent ownership, as has been the case up to that point. The backlash after this was huge. Creatives from all around the world vehemently opposed it and scrambled to find an alternative. This makes us wonder, has this been able to shake the Photoshop slash Adobe throne that's been held strong for years? Jessibel Garcia, I'm butchering the name, I know. She writes in an article for MUO, I hope I'm not butchering the name again, about this very topic. Adobe is the industry standard because it's been at the top for a long time. It got and stayed there by continuously innovating. While all the other competitors on the market are playing copycat, Adobe is laser focused on ensuring its products remain professional, innovative, and easy to use. That said, CC has hefty price tag because Adobe is well aware that competition is slim to none. And that's actually the general sentiment. Since Adobe and Photoshop are one inseparable duo, much like the Knoll brothers, with the popularity of Adobe, its major influence on the industry and the financial backing, it might be safe to say that Photoshop is staying with us for a long time in the future. And not only that, but leading the way as well. Photoshop feels like an anchor in the industry in a way. The industry was built around it, so whoever has to come replace it, if the day ever comes, has to be as or more legendary. Now that we have taken a deep dive into the world of Photoshop, we understand the history of this great software and cannot help but gawk at its success, from code lines in a clunky Macintosh Plus machine to one of the biggest and most defining pillars of the digital art industry. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Photoshop. We have come to the end of our video. We hope that you learned something new and fun today. We would love to hear what your sentiment is about Photoshop. Do you like it or perhaps hate it? Maybe you liked it and then Creative Cloud ruined it for you. Whichever it is, don't hesitate to let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching as always and see you next time.